All right, so I'm gonna show you how I work this hot knife with this board. This is an LG uh, washer, front lip washer control board. Uh, the hot knife shouldn't have no problem in getting through the plastic cover. I already took the cover off a few months ago, but um, but all we need really is to, if we're gonna replace a component, like say if we're gonna take this capacitor out, then we gotta basically use the hot knife to melt the silicone, um, the epoxy that's around it here. And then we need to just kind of expose those pins. So here we have one, two pins for that capacitor. So what I'm gonna do is try and get my gloves on. So the hot knife is, uh, uh, it's like 30 bucks on eBay, I think. Uh, I don't really remember, but I'll put a link in the description. I put a, just a zip tie. So this button, if you press it, it'll uh, hold it, basically hold it down to get hot. And if you don't press the button, it won't get hot. So I just put a zip tie so it'll be on all the time. You can feel when it gets to the PCB, it just kind of stops. There we go. And the reason I like the hot knife is because it's not gonna damage the PCB traces. Now you wanna be careful when you get around the surface mount components because those will pose an issue. Oops. There we go. Uh, if you put the hot knife directly on those surface mount components, then you could desolder them accidentally. So I would, I just recommend if you can, try to stay away from those. Usually when we're dealing with the larger components like these ones though, then uh, you're not going to be dealing with surface mounts in the area. You can see I'm taking the hot knife, I'm just kind of using it to scrape up and out that epoxy. And I'm going to clean that up here in a second. Use this little scraper to get some of that out uh, now you can see we've exposed what we want we, we've exposed the the contacts that we want to desolder there we go and what else I'm uh, going to do is just put some isopropyl alcohol in there and that'll expose it even more So that's good enough and that trace is fine. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and desolder the component, but the other side, we still have to get that, get that component um, out of there. I'm gonna use the hot knife around the edges again you want to look for any surface mount components i don't see any anywhere close so we're in the green there so i'm going to go ahead and desolder these two contacts now to encourage the wick to flow the solder into the wick i am using this uh, liquid solder flux um, and it's uh, it's very uh I don't know, it's, it's very good for that. I'm gonna just uh, get some along there. That should be enough. It's, this stuff is very sticky. So you wanna be careful not to get it on your... I'm gonna... Now you can go as close as possible to that. There we go, it's starting to melt. Uh, you can go as close as possible to the component because 
you're replacing it so it doesn't matter if you melt the plastic of the component you're on you just don't you want to make sure that you have all the numbers on the component that you don't uh, make it so you can't read the numbers just in case uh, you need that information so just about there that should do it and there we go so that's out now yes it took a little longer than uh, a board without conformal coating but definitely can be done and so yeah if you have any questions let me know see you next time